Yeah, it's quite interesting listening to a lot of people who can't see what's going to happen here. Uh, I don't think they've been down the rabbit hole long enough and haven't given it enough uh, intellectual honesty to in time that's required to actually run through what what's trying to be built here. They're just assuming too much. And with somebody the other night, I said uh, I asked if they accepted Bitcoin, and they said they're not a believer yet. And I thought that's interesting. But does that mean? That they want that they do believe in fiat and the way that that works uh and it was i didn't go down the rabbit hole with them i didn't necessarily want to open that can of worms but it's just interesting i think a lot of people who are coming here do believe that this can work it will work that we are going to build a uh, the singapore or the dubai of the world here and one of some of the conversations that we've had is that there's a lot of hope for, for example, Bukele saw what happened in Bitcoin Beach, which was a community driven uh, circular economy grow and demonstrate that the technology worked. And then Bukele's like, damn, let's do it on a country level and prove that it works. And we believe that once he's proven it works on a country level, there's a good chance he'll take it to a group called Parlacen, which is the like the four C's, the Central American countries, and try and do it on a like a, a state level or an area level and I think that that it's testament to you know gaining that traction proof of concept and I think as people see the positive effects of what's happening here they will be more and more interested in in partaking in it because the way the current system is going like a lot of people uh, we had a good comment on our YouTube the other day and it was basically like oh do you think El Salvador is going to be able to survive this, you know, the global financial crisis that's most likely coming along? And I'm like, uh, I think it's got the best best chance on the planet. Like, I don't know another country that where at the moment they've got positive GDP growth. At the moment, it's averaging just over 2% per quarter, which is awesome. And, you know, other countries are all going backwards. And it's because they're attracting smart people with positive capital um, uh, stashes and then you know they're not attracting debt they're attracting capital which is awesome and i think that that trajectory is quite clear it's quite positive i don't know of another country we've talked about it it's like where do you go it's like all the other countries are basically on this fiat system and they're going to go backwards because that's just the way it, the way it's geared um so i think that this is unique mm -hmm. like bitcoin has been an amazing branding exercise for the country uh it's it's a it's a moral flag. In my opinion, is it's a moral flag that's been planted in the ground. And as long as he stays true to that ethos and that game theory, he's got the support of some really um, some really dedicated people, really committed people. Like it takes one of my favorite sayings is you've got to have Bukele balls to do this, right? Right, we're live. Nikki, James, how are you guys doing? Welcome to the show. Great, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for inviting us. Yeah. Well, I'm really, been really looking forward to this. Um, you guys have a, a fascinating story, I think, to tell. Um, I, I, I uh, you know, intentionally didn't want to, you know, read anything about you. Or I just wanted to be unbiased, you know, uh, before talking mm -hmm. to you. So, um, uh, but um, I'm, I'm, you know, the more I'm actually more curious now. So uh, <laughs> why don't you just, you know, introduce yourself, what's your background, uh, where do you guys originally come from? Um, yeah. And tell me your story. Like how'd you get, you know, your whole journey to El Salvador. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. So I'll start. Um, okay. Let's start. Yeah. Uh, I'm Nikki. I am a New Zealander and we um, have lived in New Zealand pretty much all my life. Uh, they traveled traveled a lot but yeah um we i suppose would say covid refugees um we had made the call that we would yeah didn't didn't quite like what was happening in new zealand <laughs> and new zealand uh, pretty much pushed us away and el salvador pretty much pulled us mm. but james will go into more detail definitely on that one so yeah uh so yeah i mean we both traveled a lot and we lived in new zealand we were living in new zealand we i mean our life was great mm. uh it was excellent and obviously with covid relationships changed the environment changed the social environment changed and as nikki mentioned we were pushed out of all of our activities so we had a night school 
and we had uh, sports activities, we had social activities, which was dancing, and we were told that we weren't welcome to come in unless we basically complied with what was happening. And so that was the push factor where we were like, oh, this is it's become uncomfortable in our social circles and in our, just our daily lives. And then we saw, I've been involved in Bitcoin for a long time and uh, I've, I've long awaited the day where a country would adopt Bitcoin. And that day came while we were in, in our lockdown uh, uh, just over a year ago now, coming up 18 months. But that day came and so when Nikki and I met, she was like, oh, what are you into, James? And I'm like, Bitcoin. And we, when we started talking uh, and about what was actually happening in New Zealand, we looked at options of places to perhaps live a different life. Yeah. And El Salvador had dropped all of its COVID restrictions. And it, it was also the first country in the world to adopt Bitcoin. And we were like, man, that might be a really interesting adventure. Yeah. <laughs> This Had you guys story. been traveling before, like, like, uh, like before all this, you know, this shit happened and with, with all this, you know, <laughs> COVID, uh, uh, had you been like in the, either individually or, or together, like traveling around the world have been, been around, you know, a lot? You would have traveled a lot, had not really traveled in any third world country. So, mm. so, um, never been to Latin America before, never been to South America before. Yeah. So, I mean, I'd been to Bali once, but that, yeah, um, that was all. And so, yeah, so, I mean, it was quite a shock, culture shock yeah. coming to El Salvador. It was actually very common for a lot of New Zealanders during our, especially our generation, mm -hmm. uh, growing up to have what was called an OE or an overseas experience. So a lot of New Zealanders, you'd finish school or university, you'd save up some money for a year or two, and then you'd go overseas for anywhere from one to five years. That was quite common. And uh, I was lucky enough to have a family, like my family business was overseas. So I did personal traveling. I got to go overseas for the family business. And then again, I hadn't really lived in any third world countries. Mm -hmm. I'd been privileged enough to go to all the nice ones. And the, uh, the yeah, so coming to El Salvador <laughs> was something we weren't, we weren't experienced mm -hmm. with, but it wasn't something we were sort of afraid of in terms of travel experience. How does it feel like to be there, to live there? Like, I mean, this is—is is that is that the feeling like you are like established now? Do you feel established over there? Like, what, what is the like overall perception and feeling? What, uh, yep. So, I want to I want to preface it with we have no regrets. Yeah. That I think that's the best way to explain it. And then in terms of feeling, mm, we came with no expectations because we had no idea what we were coming to. Okay, so we came with no expectations and we definitely have no regrets coming over here. Uh, it is, uh, we, yeah, we're wanting to set up a home here. We're wanting to create a lifestyle here. There's no doubt about that. It's not easy. I mean, <laughs> I've, I've had my ups and downs this last couple of weeks and it's, you know, we have our moments. There's no doubt about that. Um, you know, there's certain just ease of living in a in a first world country um that you don't have here but you know you get you go through them and you get more and more used to it you know we will now go down to the mercados what used to be noisy scary bustly um and now it's just the norm yeah. so we you know we're used to it and and we we i suppose it's one of those things that we adapt mm -hmm. And and now it's colourful. It's it's fun. I mean, it's smelly, but it's it's we make some neat connections. We communicate. We buy our fruit and veggies here every week, mm -hmm. and it's it's a fun a fun morning. Yeah, mm. and it definitely like exceeded your expectations. Like you know the whatever expectations you had before emigrating. Like is is that like wholly different uh, or? I, I think we were actually quite lucky in the mm. way we did it. Mm. So when we arrived, we got shocked. <laughs> so uh, we didn't have uh, anybody that we knew here beforehand other than we'd met a random lady in our hometown who was the only Salvadoran. And she was like, oh, I got some friends who have a little apartment in the middle of the city that you can go and uh, rent. So mm. we pre-booked that for a month. And when we arrived, it was... Um, uh, it was a great experience. It was <laughs> very simple living. Yeah. And it it shocked us a little bit because it wasn't something we weren't expecting that when we arrived. We were under the impression it might be a little bit different. 
And it was good though. Mm. Like we're looking back at it, it's like it was it's a treasure of an experience instead of coming here and having all of the luxuries straight up front. Mm. And we we ended up in this, I guess it's probably quite a common situation for a yeah. lot of people living in El Salvador. And then there was the high walls, the razor wire, the the guys with shotguns. But by the end of the first week, we were quite comfortable with talking to the guys with shotguns outside the supermarket. And yeah, <laughs> uh, it was it was a fun experience to then ending up uh, here where we are now, and we feel very established and privileged where, where we yeah. are now. And you feel safe, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Do you also have the perception that people who either come for as a tourist, short term, long term? How do you perceive them? Do you do you think they feel you know, or it exceeded exceeds their expectations? You know, whatever you know, concerned like safety or security or whatever, uh, comfort. Um. I think most people who come here uh, find that they do end up going to the places that. Uh, um, you know, tourists go. And so you do feel safe in those areas. It's it's definitely different. You know, you, you're going and say, if you looked at the Queen Beach, I was on tape, you know, the, the road is pothole, it's muddy, it's dirty, it's a high walls, razor wire, you can't really see anything. And so that's quite a shock. If you're coming from Europe or a first world country to come in here and you haven't experienced that before, it can be quite a shock. Um, but it is safe, you know, yeah, we, I mean, we go there every Thursday night to go dancing and yeah. don't think anything about walking those streets um, in Alzante. Yeah. Yeah. So the, definitely the common tourist areas are relatively safe. Mm. Uh, like any, any city in the world, even New Zealand, you have to take a certain amount of common sense as to where you go and yeah. what times you go and things you might do that might attract attention. So, mm. I mean, that's very common, but we speak to a lot of foreigners and Salvadorans who say things have changed a lot, even in the last 12 months. But uh, we were speaking to a guy yesterday who's he's a foreigner who's been here before all of this stuff was happening. And he's saying the last three years, wow, the changes that have happened and and how he feels a lot safer. He he didn't he didn't say that he felt unsafe beforehand, mm -hmm. but there was always that in the back of his yeah. mind. Like he would hear noises or something and he might be like, oh, do I need to be aware yeah. uh, but i think he feels even safer now. yeah he feels a lot more at ease yeah i think is yeah a big one i think for um foreigners coming in one thing you know again if they haven't traveled to third world countries you know yeah. infrastructure is not in place like it is in 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 the western world and so you know rubbish collections may not happen and so you know it's nothing to throw a, a plastic bottle out of your window when you're driving along in a car you know for to see and so, you know, you see a lot of that sort of thing. And that's, you know, and the Bukali is, you know, starting a big campaign on cleaning that up, which is amazing. So definitely things are getting cleaned up yeah. along yeah. that and along those lines as well. Um, but it all takes time. It, it you know, you can't, it can't yeah. happen overnight. It's, it, you know, you just need, you need someone in there to go, hey, this is not, this is not how we want to live. We want to be, take pride in our country. So let's start taking pride. Mm. And it's going to be a generational yeah. change to actually have that happen. There's generational mm. trauma mm. and we can see that and mm. we appreciate that and we're patient with it. Mm. And, uh, we also see that there's a lot of people who are motivated to live into a brighter future, which mm. is inspiring for us. Yeah. So do you see if, um, with your own eyes, um, I mean, the, the, the transformation is amazing. Uh, I mean, the developments have been going on the last few, even today with the legislative assembly, um, mm. approving the law and it's going to be published and becoming law. And then eventually the Bitcoin bonds finally going to be issued. And then the other thing was like the extension of the tourist visa. Yeah. Is that like, uh, tell, you want to tell talk about it a little bit? Like what's the background of this uh, extension of the... <laughs> I want to get but, like my, my opinion, my 10 Satoshis. I'm just guessing what's happening here. But when we came in, mm -hmm. uh, we, and we were told, oh yeah, you can apply for your residency. In the process, you'll probably need to apply for a, a, a visa. A, a visitor visa extension mm -hmm. and apparently it's incredibly common uh and it's very simple it costs yeah. i think like 25 dollars or something yeah. and when i saw the rumor starting to happen and then i saw the tweet from bukele this morning i was like oh wow i think i know what this is mm -hmm. and uh there's also been chatter this week on twitter about uh, canada in particular perhaps maybe not being happy about 
a lot of people immigrating and they, they might be applying pressure here. That's just hearsay. I don't know anything. But what I'm seeing is the more pressure that perhaps comes in from the outside, Bukele is going to capitalize on that and make it easier for people. So I think he's showing oh, in good faith, I want to make it easier for people to come here. And the process, he's like, he's removing roadblocks. So I think that 30 day, it's just an added administration on their side and our side, mm. which he's pulled out and said, uh, you know, if you can get your residency done in the first six months, uh, I'd love to have you. And I'm going to remove the hassle of getting a police check yeah. and you still may have to do the police check oh yeah the police yes. check was the residency yeah, yeah yeah so he's removing the the hassle of spending a day to basically go and get the visa extension or or to leave the country and come back in again yeah so he's creating it so it's a lot more easier because yeah. it is quite hard you know to get your residency if, if you haven't got all your documents in order in that first 90 days yeah yeah Wow. So that's, that's a huge reduction in bureaucracy and, you know, complications like headache, right? I mean, yeah. there's no headache, right? With yeah. going through all these processes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Correct. I think it's a, I think it's a sign that he's uh, leaning into encouraging people. This is my personal opinion and mm. how I feel about what's happening, but I've had a few people contact me this morning and like, did he just do that? Like, is that real? What, what documents do I need to bring again? <laughs> That's good. You know, you were talking. You were talking about New Zealand, and uh, you know, in our in, in the the family I talked to, you know, <laughs> uh, for, uh, who are also in El Salvador. In the previous episode, it's um, I was, you know, I was I mentioned also amongst Canada. I, I think I mentioned New Zealand, Australia. I was like, this is it shocked me. I mean, I'm still intrigued that because uh, I talked to my girlfriend, and she says it's 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 mind boggling. Uh, uh, you know, countries like. Australia, New Zealand, Canada, always, you know, in our perception, you know, because I'm, we've never been there. Yeah. I mean, I've never been there uh, in either uh, one of those countries. And uh, I just thought, you know, th these would be the countries that I would if, years ago, you know, like to emigrate to, you know, to establish oneself. If, you know, if something's up and you want to maybe taste, you know, freedom and be free and, and, uh, you know, have a wonderful life. But, uh, does that shock you? I mean, uh, <laughs> or when was the moment you, it, it really like uh, made you conscious of oh, holy shit? Like, where, where, where am I? Where am I living in? You know, like, I mean, this this whole global thing is is unraveling at a, at a rate that that's un, unfathomable. But uh, what's what's your take on that? Yes and no. There's <laughs> two that shock me. <laughs> Good. James has been yeah. down the rabbit hole a lot longer than I have. I, uh, yeah, for me, um, New Zealand's stunning. It, like it is, it's an incredible country. You have got so many varieties of places to live. You know, you can go really remote and be away from it all, or you can have that whole city vibe. You can go up to mountains. You can be in beautiful national parks and the sea and, and all that sort of stuff. It is absolutely stunning. Um, I'm going to say, you know, the, the COVID um pandemic and what our government did was for me was the start of my eyes really opening my up and going this is cra absolutely crazy and it should not be like this you know uh so that's really for me when and I, and and since being here and since looking into more I know realistically it's happened prior to that but for, for my personal uh, opinion, it sort of started then because that's when all of a sudden there was things that I had every right to be able to do and I wasn't able to go and do them. Like simple things like going and getting your hair cut, you know, going and having a coffee with your friends. Uh, you weren't allowed to go and do those national parks. And so that's, yeah, for me was really when it started. Yeah. Um, but I know you all have. <laughs> well, I guess... Like New Zealand is beautiful and it's, we didn't leave because we didn't like the lifestyle. Mm. Uh, it was more to do with our why. Mm. So why were we staying and why might we go somewhere else? And the relationships, I'll speak for myself, the relationships that I had with uh, a lot of people changed. And before I was the crazy Bitcoiner, but now I was also the crazy Bitcoiner who chooses not to get experimental vaccinations and, stuff like that. And so it isolates you a bit more. And 
I guess the surprising thing for me, so it wasn't really surprising that maybe New Zealand got on board with all of this and it came along. What what surprised me more was the number of people who didn't stand up to say something. That's what that's what surprised me. And then to add, to really rub salt into the wound, the number of people who wanted to write off people who stood up and said something. I'm like, whoa, hang on. That's not how I that's not the New Zealand I grew up in. Like we're we're a country of innovation and we allow people to talk about ideas and different things. And all of a sudden, anybody who wants to talk about a different idea is now like this crazy person. Mm-hmm. That was the piece that really, really shocked me that a large, such a large portion of the population wanted to um, shut down that conversation. And I'm like, something's shifted and I, I'm not like, what are my options here? That was sort of what shocked me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm totally with you on that. I mean, this is what really still mind boggling and shocking to us. I mean, even our environment, you know, you know, people, I know, we all know people and and, you know, I think uh, even Samson, you know, you know, Samson Mao from Jan 3, he said in an interview, it's like, that, that's what's, you know, so crazy is that I think he said something like 50% of, because he's from Canada, he said 50% of Canada's people support these, you know, measures and are in support of all these tyrannical, you know, <laughs> dictatorial. It's, 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 it's really, it's, I, 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 sometimes I have no words for that, but um, do, would you, <laughs> Do, do you still, I mean, the thing is that a lot of people um, now in the face of all the evidence of the damages that you see, the deaths, the uh, you know, consequential damages, the all, I mean, everything is coming out to the surface. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think a lot of people are trying to save face or I don't know, they're in such a psychological dilemma. They're trying to, with their cognitive dissonance, to rationalize everything, you know? Uh, are you talking like to still, are you still having still, you know, some kind of discussions or, or contact with other people in New Zealand? Do they have some people change their perspective? They've, you know, maybe they've admitted to themselves, you know? Mm. Uh, so there's actually a really good clip on Twitter this morning from the Joe Rogan podcast. And they're talking about forgiving people. And that's okay. Like, and this is good. This is, this is to do with the relationships generally that we're building. And so, uh, yes, I mean, I can forgive those people. What's challenging and what's hard is that those people that judged us, like, sure, I can forgive them and just be like, okay, but you're right. There's some sort of ego investment that they're holding on to where people in New Zealand have been like, oh, everything's back to normal now. Like you can come home. And it's like, no, our relationship and the way we see the world is forever different. Mm. It's like the the line has been drawn and I like, I, I forgive you, but at the same time, I now know your true, your true mask, your true colors, the, the true way you're going to behave when you're put under pressure. Mm. And so going back to the way things were isn't really an option for us anymore when we've actually found a tribe of people who believe in more of the values that we believe in which is that we'll we'll speak our truths more and we'll stand up when things aren't right Uh, you know if someone's doing something we don't agree with we're free to talk about it and have a discussion as we're in new zealand that was taken off the table so and they're not willing to admit that it happened or put it back on the table. So mm. I think that answers it. Mm. Yeah, no, well said, well said. Um, so do you think that, let's go back to El Salvador. I mean, do you think that now that you're, I mean, do you feel like you're permanently like El Salvador? Because this is where the discussions we've had with girlfriend, with other people, like with other people who are actually seeking also, you know, to exit uh, uh, at that time, you know, when Austria totally crazy, you know, trying to enforce the vaccination with with a high monetary penalties, not maybe with jail. I think it was in ta- in discussion. I mean, it's totally crazy if I just uh, think about it. But anyway, and and we were like, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, Bukela and his team, I mean, they are trustworthy. And, you know, I also talked with Tom and Emily about this, like, uh, do you feel, because trust, you know, is the essence of any relationship. And I think trust is of uh, a huge problem, I think, in our society and our civilization. Uh, and I'm not talking about like trust minimiz- minimization or trustlessness in Bitcoin or no, like trust in relationships, right? 
any kind of relationships, whether it's small, you know, within within you or uh, bigger. Uh, do you feel like uh, is it uh, when you think about it, when you when you go deep inside, is that something where you feel like El Salvador could not only be the first one, but let's say one of the very first and few countries where we, I'm saying we, you know, the the people who are critical, who are who just want to, you know, be free and, and have property rights and 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 you know, freedom of speech and not being enforced uh, with with anything. Um, do you feel like you can you you can live there and 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 witness a truly prosperous society evolving in in El Salvador, which we had never maybe had before in in human history? Is is that something like I know it sounds a little bit abstract, but do you know where I'm going with this? Like uh, mm. because a lot of people I think thinking. Okay, what if we really pack our stuff, go to El Salvador, and then everything changes again? You know, like, uh, our, should we buy some property? Should we just, you know, rent uh, temporarily? Uh, all these kind of decisions. Um, can I preface it? You can. I'm going to keep it short. So I'm going yeah. to preface this with a personal philosophy, which is I don't recommend anyone buys Bitcoin. <laughs> when people come and ask me, should I buy Bitcoin? I'm like, no. <laughs> You need to make that personal decision. Mm. And that also applies to, should you move to El Salvador? No, you, you need to do it. You need to know your why. And uh, in your heart, you'll know what to do. Mm. Yeah, and I agree with that. Uh, when it comes to that trust, and I'm talking personally here, not you know for anybody else as well. Um, you know, Bukele was extremely tough when, when COVID first came out. He was... You know, he, people were getting arrested for being outside. He was really, really tough. And he changed. And, it, well, his, you know, he changed when, um, well, we have heard it was when Conference 2021 came in and he wasn't getting, you know, the people weren't coming to to the Bitcoin conference here. And he was told, well, you need to, you need to, you know, stop, stop all the uh, mandates that you have so people will come and so he did and then he promoted the healthy lifestyle uh he promote you know he gave the ha kits with um, IV mectin and the vitamins that you need and the panadol and and talked about the importance of exercise and things so maybe there was a reason why he was being tough we don't know mm. you know but he was extremely tough and we have had some people come to us and say you know do you realize how tough he was and that he could just change like that i don't believe he will now that's my personal choice or my personal opinion should i say uh i think that you know he is really opening the doors he's wanting people he's wanting bitcoiners to come in here he's wanting uh people to come and really boost the economy and start creating a lifestyle here if he did do those changes then he's going to see a mass exodus and he's, you know, if he wants to create the El Salvador he wants to create, then then he's not going to be able to change because we will all leave. Well, Don't know where we'll go. Yeah. <laughs> we will, yeah, you know what I mean? Hey. Oh, totally. Yeah. And uh, the, yeah. Nikki's talking about the game theory mm. behind Bitcoin. And that is, I think that's a very strong decision driver, mm. moral, you know, it's like a moral compass. And I think that was a large part of the, conference 21 thing which was they realized like i wasn't going to get on a plane because and go to a country that was going to reject me because i needed to have a vaccination it just wasn't going to happen so no way i was going anywhere until i had a path that would allow me and so i think he's realized that the game theory of bitcoin is that you've got these people who are sovereign in their in their thinking first principles and they're going to you know they're going to honor those things first i'm not going to i'm not, I'm not going to start jeopardizing those things now i put in too much effort and i'm we really both want to believe mm -hmm. that yes it will continue down that path now the thing that we could start talking about is you could go down the what ifs and there's a whole heap of what ifs mm -hmm. such as i mean things that you don't want to happen happening which would be that bukele disappears for um, unknown reasons that that would be the worst case scenario and that is unfortunately um out of his control so yeah it's we do consider what would happen and i think we need to because we need to take responsibility for if things did go wrong 
right. or changed drastically, what would we do? Mm. You know, it's funny because uh, when I, that's a typical, you know, answer. I mean, I think, because I think even Tom and Emily said, they said, you know, I, we, we generally, you know, we, we don't trust politicians. And I mean, at the end of the day, is Bukele a politician or is he, is he maybe could be the first, you know, ethical, uh, you know, <laughs> a politician who has really a mission, a vision, values, principles, you know, um, and maybe he's just in disguise of a politician. Uh, I don't know. You know, he's not a prophet. You know, he's not a he's not a, a sacrosanct, you know, man or whatever. But uh, this is the, the the reason I'm asking because for my feeling, yeah, I, I think we we can we I I can trust him. I I have the feeling if we were there or you know because I've never met him. I've never just read and maybe some see some interviews with him. But he he has he makes a really authentic. Um, ethical, uh, you know, let's say ethos-based uh, impression upon me. Uh, mm -hmm. What's your take on that? <laughs> well, I, I actually, yes, I agree. So if you go back to, you, you, earlier you mentioned about uh, maybe an experiment like this hasn't been tried before. I actually wonder, I would like to reference the United States of America, which potentially was, it was sold as the, the land of the free, which maybe an experiment like this has been tried before. And they went through a lot of uh, fiat currency evolutions to try and sort out how the land of the free should be structured. And after World War II, there was basically, oh, here's a gold standard. That's how we're going to do it. And then they came off it and then things have unraveled the way they've unraveled. And I think that as long as Bitcoiners can maintain self-sovereignty and train other people and distribute that wealth in another way and keep the network as strong as possible, I think that El Salvador has a really good chance to continue along this path and maybe other people will, other countries may also choose to follow a path like this if you can demonstrate that the people that are being attracted uh, are going to build a different um, economy, basically, and a, and a different social standard which people live by because of the sound or hard money principle that you might use. Yeah, that's my yeah, that's my line of thought too. I think you know once people and the society that are evolving, would it be you know? I think I'm to, I'm pretty con convinced that it'll take. Uh, I think it will accelerate. This process will, will accelerate in a in an unexpected fashion. Uh, mm -hmm. Would it be? Will we're talking about Bitcoin cities, circular economies? You know, you've heard of free private cities. You know, I've I know all these people. You know, who, uh, I mean, there's a lot of you know intellectual philosophical talk, which I think it's not. It's a little bit detached sometimes from the practical reality, but uh, but uh, I do I do believe it's it's an out of necessity first of all. Uh, and and then uh, people are going to taste freedom for the first time. And why mm -hmm. should they go back, you know, to this, uh, you know, dystopian world, which we're already living in, in more more or less, you know? But but they're trying, you know, with with this whole with all these non-elected institutions or entities or whatever you want to call them. Uh, uh, I mean, it's uh, I think it they will it will evolve. I think it will just evolve and. And then uh, it will take a sort of a S curvature uh, mm. from you know in in terms of in terms of speed of evolution or development. Um, I mean, you've I'm sure you've been into all kinds of rabbit holes. If you zoom out a little bit, what would you say? Uh, what would you, what do you think are the necessary conditions uh, to be fulfilled, or infrastructures, or you know, for whatever? Uh, so. Transportation, uh, efficiency, uh, health, medicine, communication, uh, the well-being, you know, children, you know, because um, we are a huge fan, for example, homeschooling. I mean, this is the future, you know. We're talking about the future that is, like, unfolding in front of our eyes. Mm -hmm. um, what's your general, like, thoughts on that? If it's, you a, a little bit. it's a balancing act. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple of things. One, I'd love to see more Bitcoin first infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And uh, the best and foremost example that I have is, for example, we want to pay our electricity bill using Bitcoin, but the local electricity company that, that supplies us, they have, they won't accept Bitcoin directly. And they, they've actually 
basically requested that we are unable to use third party services to use Bitcoin to pay our ele electricity mm. bill as well. And it's like, well, um, you know, <laughs> energy is a really important part of life. And so that's really highlighted the fact that uh, there's, op there's opportunity here for businesses to come in. And I believe Bukele wants to solve it with things like the geo geoelectricity and the hydroelectricity. And But he's obviously going to need to have a company that distributes that energy over the lines and is a Bitcoin first ethos company. And mm -hmm. I, we would love to see more food go down mm -hmm. that path as well. So just in securing the basics, such as shelter and energy, transportation and food and medical and schooling, mm -hmm. we would love to see more Bitcoin first things like that. We're already seeing it in the school system. They're reforming the school system right now. Mm -hmm. And they're putting in a whole heap of uh, new, new education um programs and part of it is financial education and in that they are including parts of the curriculum from my first bitcoin which will teach people about money and teach them how the uh bitcoin network works mm -hmm. and then i just wanted to cover that a lot of that stuff also starts to bring in regulation and regulation starts to become a double-edged sword and the regulation process is the thing that can often allow tyrannical behavior. And it was funny because we're, we're having a bit of a joke yesterday about driver's licenses. And we understand that it's good to have people who are qualified to drive, but at the same time, uh, for example, here, the driving is quite erratic. People would say it's erratic and dangerous. And it's because there's not a lot of police like monitoring it and cracking down on it and things like that. But I just have to be really conscious of what's happening and know that around the next mm. corner, there could be a dude on the wrong side of the road. I have to be very aware of that. As we're in New Zealand, it's gone to the other extreme, which is like the police now use things like the uh, speeding and bits and pieces to really crack down and control people in a lot of ways. Mm. And they even find gray areas where um, you're allowed to pass another vehicle, but it has to be under all of these certain conditions. And, and a police officer can pull you over for almost anything now and use it against you, which is yeah, it, so the reason I use that example is that the path of regulation can be challenging and I'm not sure how they're going to deal with it here in El Salvador, but a lot of people are talking about less laws being best or better or easier to manage and letting go of old laws. It's, a, it's going to be a really tricky experiment, but um, it's, a, it's again, it's a generational thing and I think it's a really interesting one to be mm. part of yeah. because um, the other way we've seen where it goes again. Um, and then when you sort of you're talking about homeschooling and schooling and things, and I mean we don't have children here, um, but there are a lot of families coming in who do homeschool, and I think that to get um, a curriculum happening, you know, um, for the way you want to bring your children up, the way you want to teach them, educate them, would be great. But because there's so many people coming in, you could definitely start a community with that. We're already seeing them. Yeah. Like we, mm. we know two or three groups mm. of people that are homeschooling and it doesn't appear to be a regulation. Mm -hmm. uh, one family said that you have to be registered in Canada to homeschool your own mm. children. I'm not exactly sure what the laws are, but uh, I don't believe that's required here. Mm. And that's, that's again, that's that slippery slope of regulation. Uh, and I don't know. It'd be great. Yeah. It's a huge opportunity. That's how I see it. And that's how yes. I want to see it. I don't see yeah. these things. Yeah. I don't see the lack of regulation as a bad thing here. I see it as an opportunity. I believe that the Bitcoin um, ethos will encourage people to be incentivized to do things better because the I my personal perspective is that the fiat system encourages people to take shortcuts and do things immorally as where the Bitcoin system is going to encourage people to do things uh, the right way and with a moral standing. Wow, beautifully said. Um, okay, is there anything else you like? You want to share like your thoughts um, on? You know, I mean, El Salvador uh, is on the on its way to become. It, could it be like the first debt free nation state? Is is that what it's all about? Right, the Bitcoin bonds is that is that the, the ultimate goal? Right, to become. Uh, first of all, independent and you know free from the shackles of slavery of the IMF, World Bank, mm -hmm. and the central banking system. But you know, you talked about sound money, you know, rooted in Bitcoin. I mean, we have now the hardest, scarcest money ever. You know, immutable, unconfiscated, every property you can think of. 
I mean, so the root is like the healthiest we can ever imagine. And this is why, you know, I'm trying to like to spin it a little bit into different rabbit holes with you guys. Like, uh, uh, and I don't see it even, you know, so far-fetched, like in 30, 50 years. I see like in t maybe 10, maximum 15 years, I think there's going to be a very fast, you know, as Parker Lewis said, uh, gradually and suddenly, a, a huge, you know, evolution in every direction. Maybe even, you know, detachment from the patent system. You know what I'm like talking about? Like finally, no more... Uh, no more, you know, restrictions. Uh, no, in in development, innovation, technology. Um, I mean, all these things that we could have had, you know, in the last whatever fifty or hundred years. So for the for the first time, we could have a civilization, El Salvador, a society, a, a infrastructure that could supersede anything we could have ever dreamt of. Even if it sounds a little bit, I know, utopian or mm -hmm. uh, sci-fi, mm -hmm. but this is what I'm convinced of. Uh, this is what I'm asking you. Like, mm -hmm. where do you see uh, El Salvador and its people and the people that are coming back, the expats, uh, the resources, the capital, the, the talents, the skills, uh, the inventors, the engineers, the, uh, everybody that you can think of, you know? With the people that have been reaching out to us and the people that we've met so far in El Salvador, the, the knowledge, the intelligence, the skills are incredible. You know, you've got people who have got potential to start up some amazing businesses or already have amazing businesses who are really trying to get in. And El Salvador feels like it is the place to come to create. And where in other countries, things are becoming stifled because of all the rules and regulations. You've stopped learning how to, you know, use your creative brain and because you have to, you know, you're sort of led down a different path. Here, it feels like it's an, a blank canvas and you have the ability to actually come here and, and really create. Yeah, mm. for sure. I I had one of my thoughts there and I've, oh, I've, 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 <laughs> let, I've, I've let it go while I was listening to what you were saying there. But um, I, oh gosh, really wanted that one too. Um, but is it I a melting pot? Let me ask you uh, something different. Uh, do you feel like this is like the the first true? Because I always thought you know New York or you know cities like New York could be like the the true melting pot where all mm -hmm. kinds of people come together, you know, peacefully. They they cooperate with one another, they talk to one another, they interact with one another, they develop and evolve with one another. Is would would you see that like? Um, there's definitely people making connections, people are making connections and um, for business opportunities and ideas and concepts. So there's all sorts of different pockets and you relate to different people and, and people are definitely coming coming in together who have never met each other. They might live on completely different sides of the world and, and they're going, well, we can, we can go down this path, you know, or we can go down that path. So there's definitely that happening. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think the, like the Bitcoin bond thing is interesting. Uh, I don't think they'd be necessarily debt free because what they're doing is they're, sort, they're crowdsourcing the debt effectively. And, uh, but it, I think it's a, it's a really interesting concept. And a lot of people are sort of like, oh, well, if the, if the Bitcoin city is tax free, you know, it won't work. And how does it work? Like, where are you stealing the money from? And it's not that it's tax free, it's that the tax incentive structure is different. And instead of trying to tax the individual on all sorts of crazy little things, they're just going, right, where, where is the main point of taxation, which is commerce? And that's, that's the easiest place to police because you've got, generally you've got businesses where you can identify them and do it. And I'm happy to, like, I'm not against taxes. Mm -hmm. I know that things have to be paid for. Like, I know a road has to be paid for somehow. So uh, I don't, yeah, it's quite interesting listening to a lot of people who can't see what's going to happen here. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think they've been down the rabbit hole long enough and haven't given it enough uh, intellectual honesty to in time that's required to actually run through what what's trying to be built here they're just assuming too much and with somebody the other night i said uh, i asked if they accepted bitcoin and they said they're not a believer yet and i thought that's interesting but does that mean that they want that they do believe in fiat and the way that that works uh and it was i didn't go down the rabbit hole with them i didn't necessarily want to open that can of worms but it's just interesting. I think a lot of people who are coming here do believe that this can work. It will work, mm -hmm. that we are going to build a uh, the Singapore or the Dubai of the world here. 
And one of some of the conversations that we've had is that there's a lot of hope for, for example, Bukele saw what happened in Bitcoin Beach, which was a community driven uh, circular economy grow and demonstrate that the technology worked. And then Bukele's like, damn, let's do it on a country level and prove that it works. And we believe that once he's proven it works on a country level, there's a good chance he'll take it to a group called Parlacen, which is the like the four C's, the Central American countries, and try and do it on a like a, a state level or an area level. And I think that that it's testament to you know gaining that traction, proof of concept. And I think as people see the positive effects of what's happening here, they will be more and more interested in in partaking in it because. The way the current system is going, like a lot of people, uh, we had a good comment on our YouTube the other day, and it was basically like, oh, do you think El Salvador is going to be able to survive this, you know, the global financial crisis that's most likely coming along? And I'm like, uh, I think it's got the best best chance on the planet. Like, I don't know another country that where at the moment they've got positive GDP growth. At the moment, it's averaging just over 2% per quarter, which is awesome. And, you know, other countries are all going backwards. And it's because they're attracting smart people with positive capital um, uh, stashes. And then, you know, they're not attracting debt, they're attracting capital, which is awesome. And I think that that trajectory is quite clear. It's quite positive. I don't know of another country. We've talked about it. It's like, where do you go? It's like all the other countries are basically on this fiat system and they're going to go backwards because that's just the way it, the way it's geared. Um, so I think that this is unique. Mm -hmm. Like Bitcoin has been an amazing branding exercise for the country. Uh, it's mm -hmm. it's a it's a moral flag. In my opinion, is it's a moral flag that's been planted in the ground. And as long as he stays true to that ethos and that game theory, he's got the support of some really um, some really dedicated mm -hmm. people, really committed people. Like it takes. One of my favorite sayings is you've got to have Bukele balls to do this, right? Like, it's a big game plan. Yeah, you got to give it to them. Yeah, you got to give it to him. Yeah. I mean, he, he really deserves the credit. I mean, sometimes I'm like, I'm, I'm like, some, sometimes I, I'm not, I don't want to call it paranoid, but, or, or too much, but it's like, is, is he still alive? Seriously? I mean, you know, like, he's like against, like, is he, or is he just, because, you know, there's all kinds of theories and real conspiracy theories, like, is it being put into place, you know, just as an experiment in case, you know, everything else fails. I mean, there's all kinds of crazy theories out there, but, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you gotta, you know, uh, rely upon your logic, your ra rational thinking, your intuition, your instincts, your feelings, emotions, and perception, right? Uh, holistically. Yeah. So my question to you is, um, do you think that I, I lost? Yeah, I lost. I lost. I think I, um, I was a little bit too deep into the rabbit hole. But do you do you think that El Salvador is um, is gonna be? No, I lost it. I, there was a specific question I was going to ask you. I, I'm sorry it's about okay. that. No, it's okay. While you're thinking about it, what you there was some. I remembered something I wanted to say earlier. So uh, the Tucker Carlson interview, Bukele said something on there that I thought was really. Um, important and he so Carlson also sort of suggested maybe you should be under attack and he's like I put my truth on the table he's not hiding his truth anywhere wow. yeah. he's speaking his truth and he's he's acting as he speaks and he said that is my greatest defense in regard to what I am doing it's really hard to come at me when I say this and I do this and that's one of the things that we've really noticed here is like we have had, we've made good, great friends with some locals here, had them around for a barbecue recently. And we talked about the new highway that connects the city and the beach. And, and they were like, uh, they were like, we, we don't care what he might be doing in the background. He said he was going to finish the road. He finished the road. The money was spent. It wasn't mm. stolen and the road never finished. Mm. He delivered. And Bukele appears to have this very strong I'm going to tell you about it after I've delivered it. We, we're aware that there's a hydro plant and a geothermal thermal plant being built, but you don't hear about it in the news. You see the odd like sneak peek, but he's not going to talk about it until it's done. And he's going to be like, look, I built this for the people. Amazing. Yeah. He really delivers. Yeah. huh? So he had the promises, but then over delivers, right? Yeah. Or, or at least not so conspicuously. Yeah. 
That's his intent. Yeah. yeah. And I think I, was that's- gonna, I think I got the question um, because I was talking, I was thinking about Jeff Booth because I think he's, you know, in his talks and, you know, Jeff Booth, have you, have you read his book? And his, and his, yeah. yeah. We, we actually got to meet him last year, which exactly. was awesome. I mean, I just love Jeff Booth because he really, I think he's trying to hammer into the brains of people like, hey guys, you know, you are thinking within this. It's really hard because we've been so brainwashed, so indoctrinated. So, you know, I think only children can really do this. Like, like think out of the box, like, like, you know, uh, like that. And it's, and you were talking you know, about the conditions, the structures that necessary and, you know, and about taxes, I think. Yeah. We were talking about taxes and I was thinking, and you got the money and you got the hardest cars is money. And I think we can't even imagine what it is, what it would be like to live in a def- with a deflationary money that it increases exponentially. Once, you know, we think in purchasing power, unit of account, and then everything, you know, other countries come and interact, commerce, trade, whatever, you know, they we interact with one another, right? So uh, it, we, you're gonna have for the first time, like like shooting through the roof, you know, exponential purchasing power. So this is how things gonna be financed. <laughs> and I think this is something, uh, even I have sometimes difficulty with imagining it. Right, well, and, or comprehending it, but what do you think? Uh, is that is that a valid argument? I think it's a very yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it's a great thinking point, and because there's a lot of people who are just straight off the bat, it can't work. It's impossible, and it's like, well, once upon a time, going to the moon was impossible, and you know, here we are building a rocket ship to Mars and electric self-driving cars and AI. Like, we're, mm-hmm. impossible is a not a good argument. Uh, I think that. It's a great experiment to try. And if you've got people who are keen to do it, let's do it. I mean, the, in terms of the technology of the monetary system that's being used, it's fantastic. And why not give it a go? And so one of my interesting things is that uh, a lot of people say, oh, are you against CBDCs? And I'm like, no, if people want to sign up for CBDCs, great, go for it. Good luck, have fun. But in response, I want the opportunity to use something else. And that's just how I see free speech. It's like, you can speak using a CBDC if you want, and I'll speak using Bitcoin if I want. That's how freedom of speech is meant to work. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, we should, I think it's great that El Salvador is doing this and I'd love the world to let it play out and give it a go with an open mind. Um, But I know that's going to be a challenge. (laughs) So we are, yeah, we are on the same, on the, we are totally aligned, right? So, so it's about really free choice, free, real, real free market, because we don't have that. I mean, in the, in, in, in the, in this world we're living in, there's no, it's not, you know, it's not real capitalism. There's no real free market, no real free choices. Uh, uh, we are, you know, uh, ruled and governed and, uh, yeah, dictated by a bunch of, I don't know, whatever, you know, so sociopaths, psychopaths, um, uh, the parasites, uh, but some call them elites. So I think we should really stick to paras- parasitic institutions. Um, so before we wrap up here, um, is there anything like you really want to share with my listeners um, that that we haven't talked about that and it should be really emphasized? Yes. <laughs> Please. A <laughs> uh, majority of your... I assume that the majority of your users of Bitcoin at least know what Bitcoin is. And our our mission here is basically to encourage the use of the Lightning Network. And there's a number of reasons for that. And it's because uh, the more capital that's locked up in the Lightning Network, the less Bitcoin are locked up on exchanges, which means there's less leverage to mess with the value. Uh, using Lightning is a, it's actually, once you get started, it's a simple and fun process. And it also encourages the network to grow. It encourages e-commerce and and, um, a lot of positive things to happen. So if people have never used a Lightning wallet, go and download something that's free and easy. There's no KYC and somehow get Satoshis on it. I ask someone you know. Name the wallets, name the wallets, because Beautyon, you know, you probably know him from Twitter. He always says, you know, why didn't you guys, you know, say it, okay. say it, you know. Right. <laughs> name, all- name the wallets, yeah. please. But, well, we, um, so I'm not favoring any of them here. They've all got different selling points. So mm. uh, I'll start with Bitcoin Beach because we're in El Salvador. 
Uh, and the reason I, uh, that we like to, to talk about Bitcoin Beach a lot is because they're actually feature rich in their service. Even though it's a, like it's a service that's custodial, that they hold your Bitcoin. If they turn the servers off, you've lost it. The features on Bitcoin Beach are awesome. And you have this new stable sets, which allows you to hold value in your Bitcoin if you want. It's experimental, but it's interesting. Then uh, we love things like Wallet of Satoshi, which is a really fast low friction experience basically you download the wallet and get money on it so well this value on it super fast we use that for onboarding all the time and then you can go to things like um phoenix breeze and moon which are both which all three are self-custody wallets and which means that if they turn the servers off you can recover your funds again these are great wallets these are ones that we use all the time and there's other ones out there as well but we don't use them as blue, much blue, oh, blue wallet we use blue wallet a lot yeah. which is really good as well because they have bitcoin and lightning built in and you can create little pots of different um value in there which is cool and i think um especially for things like bitcoin beach uh ones where they're not so um custodial it's really important that they realize that it's it's their spending money they have on it you know so not you know they don't take their savings to the grocery mm. store you know they just take this you know their spending wallet um yeah. and that's sort of something for a lot of people it takes a while for them to understand that yeah but it is it's it's the one for their lightning transactions the ones that they're buying purchasing and, um and I'll, with, I'll, yeah I want to I want to attack the people who are sitting there going <laughs> attack probably not the right word but I'd like to I'd like to raise the point that a lot of people bring up which is I only hodl like you can't spend your bitcoin and it's like well that's not going to help your hodl increase in value mm -hmm. and I'm you know I'm a big fan of hodling and sa saving but at the same time your spending habits you're going to spend money on your phone bill on your internet on whatever groceries anyway so why not buy bitcoin spend it on the food spend ten, uh, buy 10 percent more than you need and put 10 percent into savings mm -hmm. and when you use services like bit refill you can then uh, get sats back as well so you actually save a little bit on your normal spending so you can you can be a store of value hodler without any problems and without jeopardizing uh, that you can move into supporting the network mm -hmm. by learning and using lightning and spreading the good word and that that's the main thing that we believe is important is lightning adoption if you can't come to el salvador and you want to help lightning adoption yeah th that is the best thing that anybody can do right now excellent advice yeah excellent yeah excellent because i think you know all these uh, wallets that you um I, I would also call them like ethical wallets or non-custodial and easy user-friendly you know uh that you can onboard noobs or you know anybody that has like like even anybody who 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 would hate bitcoin <laughs> it just it just you make it simple and easy and i think you know this onboarding process and this is what i'm saying you know it's like uh, even in austria where i'm like there's one guy at the corner down there because i'm you know we're on the countryside up on the hill and there's a guy down there on the street on the main street who changes the tires you know of our of our cars and uh that's the only guy who who actually accepts bitcoin you know and i'm like hey listen we should you know get together with other merchants you know other people in commerce and really uh, you know educate them and enlighten them and, and give them the tools right because we need preparation is everything so yeah you said something very important you know um uh, we we need uh, as a medium exchange in order to you know go through this process until we have like super hyper bitcoinization and we think in purchasing power and everything you know it's just self-explanatory uh so yeah and it's, uh, it's, it it's fun. fun to use it's fun to use it's so quick and so instant and when people get in their in their minds that there's no third party mm. you know it's like just like handing cash over yeah it's it's really great um yeah one one of the one of our favorite things and we go into every store we we go to yeah. we're like pagar con bitcoin for 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 <laughs> can we pay with bitcoin please and a lot of it, it just becomes like we do it in a fun way mm. and we have a joke about it and a lot of people they're like no and we'll try and mm. see if they've got a wallet mm. so we can tip them extra because we'll pay them cash but it's like well if you've got a wallet we'll give you money mm. um so you can have the experience and it's good for our Spanish practice, it's good for awareness. Uh, and I think it's important that a lot of these small vendors that we go to in our local town here actually see that we want to use it because they need to see that there are people coming who want to use it. So, yeah, it's just our fun, yeah. like, thing. No, I do. find it really great that you guys, I mean, if I can may call you, like, Bitcoin missionaries, I mean, you know, with really, seriously, I mean, without you people, 
uh, there wouldn't be like any, you know, uh, encouragement, empowerment, you know, but we need to really, it's not only education, it's like, you know, being, what do you call it? Like um, with, with your passion and, you know, your vision and your ethos, it's, it's, uh, it's something more emotional. I think what people need to feel it is like the excitement also. Yeah. You know? <laughs> We're pretty excited about it when we talk. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So, Hey, anything else we should uh, we should uh, mention, or uh, you can you know uh, plug in your whatever website, blog, uh, um, handle. Yeah. Follow follow our social channels. Yeah. They, would, they would always be appreciated. Uh, our, every Monday we do a live YouTube, and we basically it's incredibly simple, very low production. We just talk about what we did for the week. But it's it, we often talk about things that have happened. So we talk about the 180 day visa, or we talk about um, how many Bitcoin Bukele has bought, and or if there's been a you know an issue we've had with the Bitcoin yeah, um, our, experiences. our experiences. So we you know yeah. we talk about that. Or if you've you've solved a problem or found a yeah. <laughs> you know. So, Great. Yeah. What's the name of the channel or where is it? Is it on oh. your Twitter handle? That you, yeah, yes. yeah. So everything is in J El Salvador. So Nikki and James El Salvador. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. So we've got the YouTube um, and so YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. Twitter and Instagram. Yeah. yeah. And then we do wow. have a website. We do sell a ebook just on how to, um, well, it's sort of moving to El Salvador and sort of, you know, tips that we wish we had. Yeah. Tips we wish we had, really. Yeah, yes. That's great. Yeah. Had. Because we've been here for 11 months, so we're nearly nearly at the one-year mark. Yeah. Yeah. But, so, yeah, and we're also trying to put together education uh, on and, and a list of books that people should read, but it all takes time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's uh, – but it's great. I mean, yeah, thank you for letting us share our, our social handles and what we do there. Well, thank you for, you know, really appreciate it. Really enjoyed our talk, and uh, it's really inspirational. Thank you so much again for all your work you do. And, um, yeah – um who knows we might see each other <laughs> as i already yes. mentioned uh we could you know i mean we we we, we haven't had, we don't have any plans right now but i think in let's say in six to 12 months we, we could have like more concrete plans and we we need to come over you know to elsewhere and really experience it for ourselves and yes. get in touch with you guys and other you know families and people from around the world canada and new zealand and um, we have, you know, our own like vision and mission, um, what we what we would want to do over there. Um, but you know, the fundamental uh, rights or, or I don't know, uh, basic human rights, you know, th these need to be protected. Whether it be property rights or knowing that you know you are you're just free to homeschool your children, not mm -hmm. being you know jabbed uh, <laughs> by force or anything. It's uh, and and any and, and everything else you know in in El Salvador could just come to fruition. Uh, um, would it be you know technological evolution or uh, new infrastructures? I think it's El Salvador could even because we always say you know and uh, uh, sort of a similar something to Singapore or other. I think it's it's going to be something very special, right? Because when I think of you know singapore or dubai whatever it's like uh, i don't know it's um the feeling is not really great because i've been to some of these countries and uh um i think it's the like how do you how do you really how can you really live there like is it is it really about freedom uh, quality of life um so all these things all these properties that that make uh yeah make a, a life worthwhile the Fiat Citadels, and they come with Fiat Challenges. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to the Bitcoin Citadel here. Uh, just on your comment about possibly visiting, uh, uh, November is an excellent time. The reason mm -hmm. I mentioned it is because you've got Adopting BTC. It was our first one last year, yeah. and we recommend it. It was a very high signal event, and it's testament to the great things that are happening here. Oh, great to know. Thanks. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Thank you, James. Thank you so much and have a great time. I hope I'll see you soon again. Okay. Great. Well, you know where we you know yeah. where we are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank awesome. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Bye bye.